we're going to transition smoothly into it. And uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Right. Hello. Find out soon enough. We'll just be talking to each other for the, the next hour. <laughs> well, which is actually perfectly fine uh, because, uh, of course, we're joined today Hello. here uh, with uh, Emmett Byrne, uh, uh, the lovely Emmett Byrne, uh, who, uh, who uh, not only uh, is uh, a, a very nice person to talk to. Last time we spoke, um, we talked for some time about, um, uh, we've got into yeah. watches and realms quite deeply. Um, <laughs> um, uh, but it's of, of course, oh, lovely. Monsters and Realms of Soulbound, of course, here we go, um, which is a, a beautiful book, and not only a beautiful book, uh, it's quite innovative as well, I think it's a nice new system um, that we, we've, we've got, and we're just going to do a Q&A today, uh, we're going to uh, ask, um, uh, we're going to ask him your questions, uh, he's going to um, diplomatically dodge <laughs> that are, um, uh, are really weird or anything uh, and then the other ones we're going to get a beautiful answers to um, so uh, but before we start in it um, could, would you mind introducing yourself and Soulbound? Sure yeah um, uh, my name is Emmett Byrne I'm senior producer at Cubicle 7 Games um, we're based in Ireland uh, but have people all across the world wor working for us now um, but yeah we publish um the Warhammer Age Sigmar Soulbound, um, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, 4th edition, uh, uh, Warhammer 40k, Wrath and Glory as well, uh, as well as Doctor Who, and uh, we have our own IP stuff uh, coming out soon, and we have had it in the past, but we, we have some new stuff coming out and, and some uh, some old favourites returning, which we'll be talking about in the next few months, which should be a lot of fun. Yes, we're looking forward to uh, all, all of that. I've got Wrath and Glory sitting over there. I should have should have had it behind me, actually, hovering, shouldn't I? Uh, oh, hang on. Oh. Is it within arm's reach? Yes, it is. Try not to knock everything down. There we go. Yeah, there it is. Ah. Yes, beautiful. Again, beautiful book. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's the same cover artist as um, a solo, actually, Johan Grenier, who is a fantastically talented yeah. artist. He, uh, he does all our covers for, for Soul Band. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a chunky book. It's a chunky book. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's, it's, yes, beautiful. Uh, but well, both are beautiful, actually. Um, so where should we start? So Soul Band is the, yes, the. Um, the Warhammer Age of Sigmar roleplay game. Yeah, so it's it's the first ever tabletop role-playing game set in the Age of Sigmar universe. Mm -hmm. So um, the Age of Sigmar came about uh, just over five years ago now. I think it was 2015 it first launched. Um, Games Workshop's um, new um, IP and system for, for their new battle game. Yeah. Um, and uh, Games Workshop pro approached us about doing Warhammer Fantasy roleplay and the Age of Sigmar um, role-playing game as well, which was... Which was you know, very flattering for us, obviously. Um, so we started development on it, I can't really remember, 2018, I want to say. Um, and it came out last year, around this time, actually, probably about, just about a year ago, I would say. Maybe mm -hmm. May? May, yeah, actually, because we were, we were deep into lockdown, I think. Um, <laughs> yes, well, yeah, it's, uh, very, it's very hard to talk about things like that, like things that happened a year ago, because it's been a, you know, a month that's lasted a year, hasn't it? You know, yeah, I, I mean, you, you were holding up the book, and I forgot other people actually have it. As far as I'm aware, I'm the only one who has it, because I haven't been to conventions, I haven't been to game stores, um, but uh, I, I'm, told, I'm told it exists beyond, beyond the wall, my four walls. Yes, yes. Um, uh, yeah, and, and, and um, Soulbound uses a, uh, a D6 system, is that right? It does, yeah. So, so um, Soulbound uses a D6 dice pool system, and funnily enough, Wrath and Glory also uses a D6 dice pool system, but the systems are actually different, which again, I think shows the flexibility of a, a D6 dice pool system. Um, Wrath and Glory was originally developed by Ulysses, and then uh, we've taken it over the publishing. But while that was being developed, we were developing Soulbound, and funnily enough, we, we both came about with D6 dice pool systems. Um, but the, the games play quite differently. But Soulbound uses a D6 dice pool. You you have uh, just three stats. You have body, mind, and soul as your kind of core characteristics or attributes. And then you have, um, I think it's 18 or 24 skills, possibly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you're rolling kind of between two and eight dice, generally. You can go up higher at, at the, the higher end of play. But... Um, the uh, it, it works off a, a flat a difficulty and number of successes. So what you want to do is say um, the difficulty might be four two, which means you roll your dice and you want to get above four and you want to get at least two successes on that. So that, that that's kind of how it works. It's it's quick and fast and frenetic um, and I think really captures the the feel of Age of Sigmar, which is this kind of 
grand mythic um, setting. It it very much feels for those who might be familiar with Warhammer Fantasy role play, which is very much down in the muck and the grime, you know, rat catchers and, and striving for every scrap you can earn. Whereas Soulbound, you already start as these powerful heroes, and it just escalates from there. Um, it's kind of a we always say, you know, like an Avengers level threat is how we put the soul man. They're this team of people that have been pulled together to, to try and defend the mortal realms. Yeah, and, and um, I think I think in the original review, um, uh, uh, Richard Jensen Parks, our tame um, mm. RPG reviewer, um, who I believe you spoke to for the last issue, actually, um, uh, about, the, yes. about the starter set, um, mm. uh, he I think he did, basically described it um, as just, you basically start almost godlike in mm. Soulbound, you are, it's a it's kind of pure power fantasy. Um, yeah. Uh, and then I think I think when I spoke to you about it, you, you said, "Well, that's true, but I mean, everything else is also really, really powerful as well." So. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 It, it, exactly. Like it, it's the power fantasy until you come up against something stronger than you, and then you realize just how squishy you are. Yeah. There's, um, there's a little subsection in, in Soulbound, the Soulbound book, uh, for everyone at home who uh, just needs it to be solved them in, in one final way, which is there's a whole section that just says God beasts. Um, yeah, but it's a subsection. Um, so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've currently actually just uh, just before I jumped on the call, I've been reviewing the bestiary that we're working on, uh, which is looking incredible. But there are some seriously, seriously scary monsters in there that I think uh, people are gonna gonna be cowering from. Kind of almost everything you can think of from the battle game is in there. Um, so you have you know demon princes and hell pit abominations and all of these things that will you know mush you into goo yes um so yeah yeah it's it's definitely a power fantasy you you take on you're almost always outnumbered you're taking on hordes of enemies when when you play um but uh it, it, it's a matter of you know survival and victory at what cost so you know you're trying to de defend other people and protect them um and you know get through things yourself so it, it is very much um mythic fantasy feel to it it's it it's yeah, fantasy superheroes a lot of the time. I think people refer to it as, which is yes, uh, which I, I think is you, you, accurate. Have you just read my mind? That's incredible. Um, I was I was just about to, it just dawned on me that this is actually a superhero fantasy, isn't it? <laughs> is it yeah, a, basically. Yeah, that's what yeah. it is. Just as you said, oh, you're protecting other people, and I'm just thinking, you know, all those scenes in uh, films that we uh, we will enjoy of superhero films of uh, yeah. Mm. Uh, saving the pedestrian from the falling building, that sort of stuff. Um, exactly. That's, that's, that's sort of the the realm we're in. Um, Cool. So that's that's what Soulbound is. Um, you you've just released um, Champions of Order as well. Um, we have, yeah. Which is a um, uh, a sort of a, quite a slim book with a ton of stuff in it. I think is the way it would be just. Yeah, I mean it's it's slim as much as it's about half the size of the core yeah. book. So uh, Champions of Order, I think, is one hundred and forty four pages. I think. Um, I can't even remember off the top of my head. It's, once it's out, I kind of forget. <laughs> kind of forget about it. But uh, yeah, Champions of Order we have out now in PDF and um, pre-order. So if you pre-order it, you'll get the PDF um, straight away, uh, and then the, the print copies. I think it is actually printing right now. Um, we signed off the print files earlier in the week, so it should actually be printing now. But it'll still be a few months before it's on the ships and in stores. But um, it's yeah, it's the first big. I suppose, player options supplement that we've released. Mm -hmm. um, so it introduces the Lumineth Realm Lords, who are a new faction that um, Games Workshop brought out last year, who are the elves from Heish, which is the Realm of Light, who serve Teclas. Um, really, really interesting uh, faction to, to play as. So you have four new archetypes um, that you can choose for them. And then each of the other factions from the core book also gets a new archetype. Um, as well as that, you get information on sub factions within it which are a, a new extra thing you can put onto your character as to where they're from and then we have tons of new talents and spells and and endeavors and equipment and yeah yes, lots the, of stuff the spells do something like double the amount you you have or something like that i think you end up with the, almost the same amount as there is in the core yeah book. yeah i think we have i think there's 100 in the core book and there's 50 or 60 in this i think yeah. Uh, and then there's yeah there's like 50 miracles in the core book and there's 50 miracles in this okay, or more <laughs> as well possibly 60 i can't remember i'd have to <laughs> i'd have to count again but yeah there's there's a lot a lot of stuff yeah, so it's a big, big, uh, big um big expansion really and um one of the, one of the interesting things i've i've um i've read about the uh uh champions of water is the um 
is the skill is it a skill or i think it's lumineth um they mm. have a skill where they can basically create a clone of themselves yes uh, which yeah. is just, it's sort of the kind of silly thing i quite like uh in these sort of yeah. yeah okay so we're going to create a clone of myself who's going to take the uh the sort of axe to the face moment uh yeah <laughs> i think i can't i can't remember which city they're from one of the the great cities i think it might be iliatha oh that's it yeah, yeah. Yes. i can't i can't remember but yeah they basically um and uh, uh, there, there was pretty much a huge downfall from too many clones being created. So you're only allowed to have one now. So you have your uh, your, your clone twin, uh, basically. But if if your character dies, your clone twin joins the binding. Yeah. They kind of they know you've died and they come they come and meet you. But before that happens, you actually have an amulet that if you die, you just pop back into existence uh pretty much naked and ready to ready to fight again once you get dressed um so it's, it's like, like having extra lives which is dressed. which is great <laughs> uh, yes uh so that, i think that's yeah that's a i think that's a perfect like little nugget of, of what soulbound is which is oh. <laughs> an amulet that brings you back to life immediately uh, i think that's yeah i think, exactly. I think that's uh, that's perfect and it, and it works because it um because everything else is so crazy as well uh yeah so um just for those um at home um, if you have any questions for Emmett, uh, drop them in the chat now. Uh, hopefully we'll get to them at the end. Uh, if you want to uh, ask us anything or shout out or anything like that, just let us know and we'll, uh, we'll uh, do our best to, to answer you. Um, so I think, well, actually, should we, well, should we talk about the Beastory first? Are we allowed, we can. Are we allowed, to, are we allowed to? Was it still oh, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, fire away. Yeah, so um, well, uh, well, could you could you tell us a little bit about uh, the bestiary? Like, how, do you, how big is it going to be? Uh, yeah, so the bestiary is actually we initially was 160 pages, but it was there, there was too many monsters to fit in the book, so it's actually now going to be 192 pages. Brilliant. Um, so it's an even bigger book. So I think we have 170. Actually, I think it's 180 monsters, mm -hmm. new monsters in there, um, plus the 40. I think. I think there's actually 60 in the core book, possibly, and this brings another 180. So you have 240 monsters uh, total between the core book and this, and um, which is just huge. Um, so, yeah, we have pretty... I think we have every faction accounted for, mm -hmm. I think, that you would recognize from the battle game. And we have almost every every unit that you that you would recognize, mm -hmm. um, which, which was fantastic to go and kind of, like, stat them out. But you, you basically, you get... We could like a little introduction to it that you know tells you about using the book and suggests um, different ways of using Doom in your game, which which is something that uh, from the core book. Um, and then each faction is presented in the same way. So you have an introduction to the faction, a couple hundred words. You have um, advice on using them in your game. Um, you have uh, nice kind of rumors that may or may not be true that the GM can drop into the game, like the kind of in-world quotes, which are really nice and flavorful. Um, and then you have, you know, using them in combat and, and, and how to do it. And then you have like these little nuggets of lore and descriptions of obviously each of the creatures. And um, so you have that for, I think we have 19 chapters. Yeah, so. That's a, that's um, a lot of monsters. That's, that's uh, near, well, you're getting close to one monster for every day of the year. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, almost. Which is, almost. Uh, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, the thing about the Age of Sigmar is we could probably just do another beef series straight away if we, if we want to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's an en endless uh, universe, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's lot, lots of really, really nice stuff um, in there as well. Um, we have the... Yeah, we have, we have you know, um, for those... Because we have um, Champions of Order... or Sorry, Champions of Destruction and Champions of Death coming out later in the year, which lets you play as death factions and then like orcs and grots and things so there's a whole chapter in the beast area that are basically forces of order hmm. enemies so here's some stats for a stormcast here's some stats for fire slayer if you need to go and fight them in, in the future uh, but then we have um you have like you know the ogre maw tribes and the um the blades of corn disciples of teench um the soul blight grave lords are in there which are going to be coming out soon um and then the sons of behemoth which are we actually had to invent a new tier for them because they are so preposterously uh preposterously strong um oh, please tell us about that i think they're i'm trying to remember i think the, the the way that the game works you have the ladder that you can go up to uh in combat that determines your combat abilities 
um, and their dice pool pushes them way beyond it. Right. So we had to create a new trait for them. <laughs> That's basically like inconceivable power or something. I can't remember what it's called, but I think they roll like 16 or 18 D6 every time they attack you. So it's a good chance they're probably going to do like 20 damage in a turn okay. and they can like pick you up and just throw you out of the combat and you're gone or they can throw you at other people and yeah as uh as um they're they're a lot of fun <laughs> that's that's fabulous yeah for, for for gms who are looking for uh just um uh endless ways of uh torturing their their, uh, their players yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a there's a box out in that chapter that just is titled squish which is uh you know the uh, it, it kind of advises GMs that hey, there's a there's a good chance these will one shot your players yeah. if you wow. if you put them up against them. <laughs> That's um, I love I love that. That's great. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're a lot of fun. Yeah, you just give fun. everyone an amulet before you start that one. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, yeah. And get away car. Um, I say car. Uh, it's probably some giant uh, sort of getaway airship. airship. <laughs> yes, that's it. Airship. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, okay, so I'm going to dive into some of the questions now, if that's okay. Sure, yeah, for um, So uh, the first one from uh, is from Joel Miller through Facebook, um, and uh, this is where you tell me that Joel you... Miller is in from The Last of Us. Joel Miller. Um, yes, this him exactly. <laughs> yes. Um... Oh, hooray! Everyone will be so happy he's back. Um... Spoilers. <laughs> Sorry, I'm replaying The Last of Us two at the moment, yeah. so uh, it's a, it's a little raw. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. That was a lockdown haircut. Uh, reconfiguration there. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, it can't be helped. Um, right. So I think uh, we'll, we'll just start with this, the the meat of his question, which is, um, what are the plans for the development and support of the virtual tabletop space for Soulbound? Uh, he mentions that sure. he plays like on Fantasy Grounds a lot. Um, that's his, okay. his sort of home for these things. Yeah. So at the moment, I believe we don't have any. Um, plans for supporting Fantasy Grounds just yet. Um, currently, we're focusing on um, Roll20 and the Foundry. Um, so at the moment, we have uh, our, our Warhammer Fantasy line is on Foundry. We have like, the core book and the starter set and uh, a couple of the supplements out on that already, which is which is a really great system. Um, which uh, Some of that stuff is on Roll20 as well, and there's more in development. Um, so we're looking at doing, obviously, considering, you know, the, the for a lot of us with the pandemic, you know, it, we're playing online almost exclusively. So it became really important for us to support that yeah. um, in, the, in the last year. So um, so we have that for Warhammer Fantasy at the moment and we're looking into it. Um, I, I've started developing it for uh, Warhammer Wrath and Glory mm -hmm. and for Soulbound as well. Um, so the same developer, Russ, who worked on the um, Foundry module for um, Wolfrup, is going to be working on uh, Wrath and Glory and Soulbound as well. So, so they are in the works for both Roll Twenty and um, and Soulbound. That's great. Uh, or oh, sorry, for for Roll Twenty and uh, Foundry for for Soulbound. And so that's all. That's all um, turning up soon. We don't know when though, do we? We don't have a. No, it's still quite early in development. Um, the, I suppose the good thing about uh, Soulbound is because of the way the system is built, it's very kind of narrative focused, where you have abstract zones and movement that you use. So it's very easy to run online. Um, you can just quickly draw a map into something or pop it into Roll20. And then if you have your dice beside you, you can just roll them. Or um, I believe there's a there's a fan-created character sheet on Roll20 at the moment that will do the rolls for you, which is which is really nice. Yes, we, have a, we have a user called uh, Queer Chai uh, who, uh, uh, from Reddit who's, um, who's asked about whether there's going to be um, a Roll20 release. And they're, they're, they're currently using the unofficial character sheets. Um, yeah. And they, they say it would be wonderful. To have more assets that's uh... yeah yeah exactly and you know it's it's, it's a big we're, we're, it's a very busy time at the moment <laughs> we've uh, kind of uh we've taken on even more staff in the last few months as well and we have, we have tons of projects if you, if you ever see our monthly production update it's just ever growing with the list of books in the works um and those are the only the ones we're talking about <laughs> um but but yeah it's, it's definitely on our radar it's something that's being worked on um but uh, the the it, yeah it all it all takes time and and testing and all that kind of stuff um, so our next one, which sort of um, segments into that uh, quite nicely, or segues into that quite nicely, is um, so what? Um, how did launching? This is from Chris Stafford via Twitter. Uh, he said, "How did how did launching a, a uh, RPG in a time when people couldn't gather uh, affect your development of it?" Uh, yeah, I mean, I suppose 
for there's a couple of things. So the actual development of the book, we were I think yeah we launched in May last year, um, and pretty much the whole company uh, started working from home in like March I think when we were we were put into lockdown. Um, so you know it was quite a crucial time for us. Um, for myself, it helped because I had a lot of writing I needed to get done, so I could just sit at home and lock myself in a room and, and do the writing that needed to be done. Um, you know, we've all the, the tools now where we can have various meetings and we can send files and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, but it, it was a challenge because, you know, with, with something like the, the core book, you have hundreds of pieces of art, uh, which takes up gigs and gigs of space. Um, so if you have, say, you know, we, we have two graphic designers in house and we have external graphic designers that we use. So if you have a graphic designer working on something and they need to send the files to someone else, they have to upload, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 gigs worth of content to try and send it to someone to, for them to make a change. And then they have to re-up it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, so that can be a challenge. Um, and some of our, some of the team live in, in parts of Ireland that have, don't have the best internet. Um, which which is unfortunate during a pandemic, yes. um, but uh, but yeah. So I mean th that side of it was a challenge. Um, th like the night before it launched, I think it, it just happened that you know we all ended up working quite late. I think I was up to like two a.m. working on the final thing, um, you know, trying to send bo files back and forth and getting out and getting it ready for launch. So so the actual development of it was, you know, it it wasn't ideal but you know it, it worked quite well um i think you know the team adapted quite well to it um you do have points where it's the um it'd be much easier to walk over to someone's desk and just say hey can you move that there and we'll put this here and that kind of thing whereas what you're trying to do then is mark up a document and, and give directions and things like that um but, uh, but yeah no from the development standpoint it, it, it was challenging but i think the team did really well and kind of pulled together on it on it quite well and when it launched you know uh, the it did really well it crashed our website which was great Perfect. um uh which was you know great but also not ideal because people couldn't buy it um well, i think it's but uh, yeah but, it's, it's pretty good at break, breaking the internet for your for your game is quite nice i think isn't it yeah yeah and then i think the same thing happened with wrath and glory as well so we have since um you know we have we have different um what do you call it uh servers <laughs> looking after the website now it's more robust yeah. Um, as far as actually like playing the game, you know, as I said, it, it plays quite a while online. The the big downside for me personally was um, not getting to you know go to Gen Con and things like that, and you know share it with people and sharing the excitement and and hand people their book, um, which which you know was a big letdown because Gen Con last year would have been my first Gen Con, so you know we're all very excited about. It, but obviously, yeah, for very very serious and good reasons, we couldn't go. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's look, it's probably going to be mostly the same this year without any conventions. So, so that's a big downside of it is not getting to meet up with people and, and discuss it and chat it and, and you know hand them their book and, and stuff. Um, as far as playing it online, I think I think a lot of people have adapted quite well, and I've heard from a number of people that Soulbound is very easy to play online. Um, and from playing my home game as well, yeah, it is the the, the abstract zones and movement work really well for it. Yeah. Did, did you uh, adjust anything in, in the original um, book? Uh, based on everyone having been sent home you know, at that time. Did you, did you do any tweaks where you're like, actually, if we just t change this tiny thing, uh, it makes it slightly better online, uh, and that's right now will be quite helpful for people? Um, no, not really. Because like, early on we had, um, to get that, like the epic f mythic fantasy feel mm. to it, um, we didn't want to be constrained to, you know, like things like, five foot movement, 10 foot movement, yeah. that kind of thing. We wanted to make it much more open and free because that just lends itself to the, the kind of frantic and frenetic feel of the game. Mm -hmm. So we were already in that place for yeah. it. And, you know, um, D6 is again, very easy to, to come across and roll. Um, so so no, we, we didn't adapt anything. I think it's just kind of a, a lucky coincidence that, that it plays quite well online as is. Yeah, that's it. Uh... That's great. Okay, so let's let me find my next question for you. Um, oh, it's a follow-up from Chris, from Chris Stafford. Um, and can I just say to everyone at home who's watching me um, touch my nose and things like that, uh, hay fever started, everyone. Uh, so that is why. Oh no! That is why. <laughs> that is I why, hate hay fever. That's why I'm a bit, you know, uh, a bit fuzzy. So I do apologise um, uh, for anyone watching that and going, no, don't do that. We don't touch our faces anymore. Um, right. So. Um, 
So uh, what part of the game do you think people will appreciate when they can play face-to-face? Um, hmm. I mean, I'm looking forward to gathering around with my friends and playing it. The last time I, play, I played with my friends, the game of person was still in playtest. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, I think one of the things I like about these six dice pools is the, the feel of them and, and how um, the, the actual tangible feel of picking up a load of dice and rolling them. I think the excitement of that at the table will be a lot of fun. And you, you know, that thing of just dropping a load of dice and seeing how they roll and everyone being either elated or devastated at, uh, at the roll that comes out. So you know, f- from that point of view, I think, I think that'll be, um, that'll be a really nice experience. Um, aside from that, God, uh, I can't really think maybe, maybe people getting to use their, uh, their, their miniatures that they might oh, have to yeah. hand for, uh, from, uh, from the battle game. Uh, just getting to, to drop those on the table. I have a, a nice collection building up here now. I, Actually, only took up painting uh, at at Christmas. I, I yeah. um, so I have a, a nice collection of night haunts and stormcast there and war cry, and I have more stuff on the way, which is yeah. Yeah, so. I, mean, uh, <laughs> I think that's the look of um, uh, that of someone about to say it costs a lot of money, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, it's business expense though. It's yeah. business <laughs> expense. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Research materials. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't argue that at all. Um, I. Uh, Yes, I started painting during lockdown again, um, mm. and it's, I've not done it for years, um, really. I, I sort of dabbled, and uh, it's just it's just nice to approach the hobby as uh, the, in like the most hobby way, you know. It's yeah. it is the most like knitting, I think, or something. Yeah, or, yeah. Or, uh, so. I mean, for, like for myself, do you know, like um, RPGs used to be my hobby and are now my job. Mm. Uh, they're still my hobby, but it's nice to have something that's you know a step removed. Um, uh, and video games, it's it's hard to find video games you can play in front of young kids. So uh, sitting down at the table and painting is a is a nice way to spend the weekend, uh, which is which is lovely. Um, yes, lovely. Um, so uh, here, here's just immediate deep cut. Okay, from Michael on Twitter. He's asked, will we be getting a chance to play as Scathborn or Medusa in the future? This is an interesting one because we were actually only talking about, I was talking about this to uh, Elaine Lithgow, uh, who's one of our writers, uh, the developers. Um, I was chatting to her about the other day. Um, and originally, the Scathborn, Scathborn? They have, they have a fodder or an accent over it, Scathborn. Oh, well, um, I'm, I'm sure Twitter can't handle that, so that's probably why uh, it's... Uh... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I call it a fodder because that's what we call it in Irish. Um, the they we didn't really consider them for Soulbound mm. because they were kind of like Marathi's secret service mm. hidden away, and they, they would only come out under um, extreme circumstances. And if they did, they would usually be um, you know have like glamours and, and, and illusion magic disguising their appearance. Mm. But with the events of Broken Realms Marathi, they are now, they walk more out in the open. So you have these winged um, Daughters of Cain and, and uh, others with the bottom half of a snake. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's something we talked about. So w- what we might look at doing in the future is maybe doing like uh, PDFs that might expand on the archetypes for some of the other, uh, some of the facts that we already have. Rather than doing another big Champions of Order 2, we might do a little bit of a deep dive on, on some of the other factions. So we might see in the future a Daughters of Cain PDF supplement, 10, 20 pages uh, with some new archetypes. Uh, might do for, you know, the Lumineth or um, the Fire Slayers or whoever, you know, um, some of those are clips that didn't make it into the book or maybe as, as new models are released and we go, hey, that's cool. Let's, uh, let's, do, a, um, let's do one for that because I think they're quite interesting. Um, it also brings up some interesting questions. If they are Rathi's Secret Service and some of her most prized why would she let them become soulbound? Which uh, immediately is an interesting question for us that we have to answer, um, which could be very fun in the future. Yes, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I suppose it. You have to. Yes, you have to invent backstories at that point. You're, you're already. Yeah. You're already, you're already generating, aren't you? Uh, yeah. You. Scatborn um, and Canary are Canary, 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 I won't say Canary, um, are, are quite interesting. But yeah, initially they weren't in, uh, we didn't think of them for the core book because they are basically these hidden 
um, peoples within within the Daughters of Cain. But now that they're more out in the open, I think they could we could definitely see them in the future. I won't say definitely, but yeah, it's something we've chatted. <laughs> yes, confirmed. Yeah, we <laughs> <laughs> do say confirmed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, okay, so um, I've got one here from uh, Juan, and I'm going to ruin your name here, Juan. Uh, Juan uh, Escondido, I believe. Um, now, and this is this is a beautifully written uh, piece, so I, I'm going to also mangle that. Um, so I'm excited about the upcoming books allowing players to take on more unconventional roles, such as the force of death and destruction. But let's face it, what all red-blooded gamers want is the opportunity to wear the techno-magical uh, raiment of a scheming anthropod rat. Any plans to work on books that will let players play the roles of Skaven? <laughs> um, I mean, I would have put it in the core book if I could have. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but no, um, I think the Skaven uh, are very popular both in the community and in the office. Um, Elaine again uh, has been writing Skaven for the last few months. Just the way it's happened with various projects, she's ended up writing uh, Skaven for uh, Soulbound and for Warhammer Fantasy and more stuff for Soulbound. And so she wrote an all Skaven adventure and then wrote the Skaven entry in the Bestiary. And yeah, so uh, Skaven are very popular. Um, but yeah, I, I think we've chatted a bit about Champions of Chaos as something we might do in the future. I think if we were. Yeah. If we were to do it, I think it'd be quite an interesting look because um, you look at how are they how are they bound together or why do they come together? Um, and it's going to be a powerful you know demon or something that that, that brings these disparate peoples together. Um, the Skaven, personally, I I've you know toyed with things in my head where a lot of their tech becomes very like what we have for the Caradron. But probably with a chance that they can explode. <laughs> um, the so yeah, I mean, I could potentially see in the future. You know, if you have Champions of Chaos book, you might have your Skaven. Then with stuff like the Slaves to Darkness, you have all the awesome Warcry warbands, mm -hmm. um, who are just absolutely amazing. Um, and then you have things, you know, like a Chaos Chaos Lord, Chaos Sorcerer Lord. Mm -hmm. um, you have the amazing new, like the the Lord of Pain or the the Myrmidish pain bringers from the Eden Knights of Slaanesh. Um, so there's a lot of different things you could do. It's whether we, it would be, whether you could play as demons or not, or whether it'd be corrupted mortals. I feel like it'd more than likely be corrupted mortals rather than demons. But, um, but yeah, it's something that we, I think we'll definitely look at in the future um, and see about how that's, how that's going to look and, and what a chaos game looks like that's not just everyone makes their characters and then fights to the death and then everyone makes new characters i mean yeah which uh, uh it sounds fun in itself but maybe not be might not be very good for a campaign play yeah, uh, yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> okay that's uh, that's wonderful i i must say that um the skaven i think are probably um the thing i have still in my brain the most from when i used to uh, play more warhammer miniature game, miniatures games mm. um because i think i had more more time um, oh nice and i think i think that's that's what's done it to me uh that that sort of uh uh yeah you know, fighting in ruins sort of uh mm -hmm. uh up close thing yeah so um which is a uh, pretty exciting pretty exciting and, and nice for me to hear that we're going to get some uh some really weird rats um well yeah i mean like the, also the idea of oh well you know you're a skaven and you're a dark oath chieftain or dark oath war queen or whatever and you're bound to sigma you know yeah. where they're maybe they're on a path to redemption of some sort or who knows yeah. who knows yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 rodent redemption absolutely yeah <laughs> uh, that's, where, that's where we're heading that's, um excellent um cool so um now so in terms of what's coming next mm. for soulbound uh beyond beyond death and destruction um uh we we have a um a reader on reddit who's uh, asked the question of um are there any plans to release realm specific supplements um we again it's something we've chatted about you know we've mapped out the next uh, year of releases mm -hmm. um and then beyond that is more aspirational and, and what we could potentially do yeah. um the I, th I think we'll definitely lo be looking at the other realms a lot more. Um, I think one of the big thing, big draws with Age of Sigmar is being able to go with these other realms. Mm 
Um, now, whether that is it may be a book with um, similar to what we did, where we have the great parch in the core book, which we have like 20, 20 to 40 pages on the great parch, which is, you know, this location in Akshi. We might do a book that's that for each realm. So you'd have mm. 20 to 40 pages on each realm, um, which would be interesting. And then maybe deeper dives on cities or, or sections of the realm themselves. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun to do. Um, I think looking at what we've released for Warhammer Fantasy with Altdorf, um, which is a you know the crown of the empire, big city. It's two hundred and almost two hundred fifty pages just on a single city, uh, which is absolutely incredible depth that gives you somewhere to play in. And you know we've done the same for Middenheim as well, which is another warm fancy city. So um, I think something like that would be great, like a city in a particular realm. Uh, personally, I'd love to do a book on Lethus, which is um, in the in Shaish, um, because I think it's a really interesting city. And then you have. Um, Settlers Gain in Heish, uh, which they've just, Games Workshop just released um, a new short story about, which just makes it sound super interesting. Um, so those kind of things I think will be really nice. I think if we were to do them, we would be like, okay, well, here's a city you can play in. And then maybe like 20 or 30 pages on, okay, here's the stuff about the rest of the realm. Yeah. Um, which, you know, gives you a, a grounding for, here's what a city in Shais looks like. Here's what a city in Gur looks like. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd love to do that kind of stuff in the future. We don't have any concrete plans right now, but I think it's it's something we'd all be pretty keen to do. Yeah, I, uh, that sounds great. And it also highlights that um, the kind of th the, the sort of central part of Soulbound, where you you are living in these huge like bastion cities almost. Mm, you know, yeah, and so uh, and then it's sort of anything outside is you know fair game for death and violence really. Um, I, I think yeah. probably in the walls as well, but. Uh, uh, more so outside. So um, yeah, that sounds really good. How you how, yeah. uh, thread it, threading those things together and starting from that. Um, yeah, just have, giving everyone this like big blob of like here's here's the uh, here's the city and then everything outside of it. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Because um, I think what you know we've done with um, with the starter set, we have a 64 page guide to Brightspear, which is that city, yeah. which gives you a really good grounding for a city to play in Akshi. Um, and then with Shadows in the Mist, we have um, about yeah th 30 or so pages on Anvilgard, which gives you more on, on the city of Anvilgard as well. Um, so that's now two cities we've done in the Great Parch in Akshi. So uh, I think I think it's time we go to, to another uh, another realm, um, which we are actually doing with our next adventure uh, campaign is in Greywater Fastness in Giran, which is quite an interesting city because it's in Giran, which is the realm of life, but it's this big industrial, smoky like smog filled noise filled pollution filled city in the smack dab in in the realm of life so that'll that'll be a really interesting one as well um but yes uh, def definitely keen to explore other realms yeah so um remind me which adventures we've had already i've i've completely blanked on them yeah so i suppose from the top we have crash and burn which is our free adventure uh, written by elaine lithgow which is an absolutely fantastic I think example of what Soulbound can and should be like. Um, very lots of really cool set pieces in there, and lots of waves of enemies that you have to deal with. Um, and then we have Shadows in the Mist, which is a six-part campaign set in Anvilgard. Mm -hmm. um, we started releasing it in I think July, August last year, and we've kind of gradually been re releasing more um, adventures as they've been ready. Yeah. Um, we're actually now closing in on coming up to the last adventure coming out um so we've had five adventures already um and then the next one to come out is balancing the scales which is the last adventure in the campaign um and that'll be the, the collective campaign adventure um in that book as well we'll also have uh, you know we have the guide to Anvilgard, mm -hmm. but we also have another 10 or so pages on harkurin who, where for those who keep up with the battle game is Andalgar gets taken over by Marathi, what happens afterwards? So we've we've more stuff on that. Um which is which is really nice. Um and then we've had the yeah, the the starter set, which has uh, is set in Bright Spear and has its you know teach you to play adventure and a city guide. We've released PDF adventures set in Bright Spear called Fateful Night, which was like our Halloween one, which has a lot of night haunts. And we released Trouble Brewing, which is um it was our like holiday uh, one, which has a uh, Jacob Bugmanson the Eleventh of Bugmans, the 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 famous uh, Dwarden or uh, dwarves from the old world, um, which is kind of like a fun pub crawl adventure, um, which, which is a lot of fun. Um, God, is that it? I think that's it. 
that's incredible that's incredible <laughs> really isn't it that you've been able to do that i think to, to yeah uh, <laughs> yeah yeah so at the moment i think we yeah we've five adventures out currently for shadows in the mist and the sixth one is coming out in the next few weeks that's great so great. cool um and then uh, a very um short question here which is um when can we have the spanish version um <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the, the the Spanish version is being worked on. We have um, we have translation partners uh, for various languages for our lines. Um, we should be getting somewhere. Uh, we're we for, we're doing up our website, so we'll have a place on there where you can see who's doing what translations uh, and things like that, and, and then get point towards them. But I actually I don't have a timeline, and I'd rather not drop another company <laughs> in it by just yeah. saying a date. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, next week it'll be out next yes, week. It's, it's next. If you go, if you go <laughs> yeah. there now. Uh, so. No, I, it, I'm sorry. Don't. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a lot. That's absolutely fine. Um, that's a... <laughs> Uh, yes, I, th I thought that we, we thought that might be the answer uh, because uh, uh, these things are labyrinthine in their uh, uh, their process towards the light. Um, so um, that's great. That's that's all of our user submitted questions. So I suppose I just need to ask the really the really broad one, which is: Have you got anything as yet unheard that you'd like to uh, spoil terribly for everyone? Um, oh God. Um... I don't think so. I think we've announced most of the stuff we're working on. So, yeah, we have. Yeah, so next coming out is the B series, which will be out in the next few weeks. Um, and then we should have the completed collection for Shadows in the Mist, um, which will be really nice to, to have. Uh, then within the next few months, we have Steam and Steel, which is our kind of crafting equipment uh, vehicle combat book um, which is coming along really nice a lot a good chunk of the writing has done all that on that already and it's looking great um so you know you have your rules for crafting rules for vehicle to vehicle combat or vehicle to greater demon combat in there as well um so that's coming along really well then the next big release am i going to get this wrong the next big release after that is champions of death Yep. which will bring in the death archetypes um which which is really really interesting so you'll have the you have the night haunts, so you can play as ghosts. You have the Ossiarch Bone Reapers and uh, Soul Blight Grave Lords, so um, you can play as as vampires and, and skeletons. Um, and I've forgotten a faction. The Flesh Eater Courts, yes, which are my favorite faction, funnily enough. Yeah. I love them. Um, Why is that? So, yeah. I think they're just kind of tragic. I think they're just like a tragic faction. They have this delusion. I. I the bit that always gets me is there's there was a point during the Age of Chaos when Chaos were trying to take over and the Flesh Eater Courts came to help the Forces of Order, but the Forces of Order just saw them as these slavering, crazed ghouls and attacked them instead, which was uh, just a bit sad. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the Flesh Eater Courts are great. Um, so yeah, that book, very similar to Champions of Order, a lot of new archetypes, um, sub-factions, more talents, more spells, more miracles, more endeavors more everything um so yeah that's that's coming up um after that we have artifacts of power which is our magic book then after that we have champions of destruction uh yeah it's just a magic book yeah because <laughs> like uh, sorry I, I, i'm i'm right in saying that we've already got quite a lot of magic yeah sorry actually i suppose i i should say artifacts of power is more of uh, magic items of course book. sorry of course sorry. Um, I so have... but it, it has a, a lot of It'll have a lot of endless spells in it. Um, and one of the big things that we want to tackle is endless spells. And are they just spells that you can dispel? Are they like beasts that you can fight? Are they like these weird, almost Zelda-like puzzles to to un unravel? Um, then you know we'll have uh, a lot of magic items for folks because while Soulbound isn't a, really a game about getting the loot mm. and getting the best loot, they've already got there's some got really thing, surely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you start off with magic weapons. I don't know what more you want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the, but yeah, the, it, you can. You know, this will have more magic items, but also we'll have artifacts, which are these kind of more powerful items. But each comes with a big description on them, and each will have a one-page adventure to go and get that mm -hmm. item, um, which would be really nice, I think. Um, but yeah, that's still in early development. That's only in pre-production at the moment. Um, and then I think that's all we've announced. <laughs> Yes, so I won't say anything else. Um, but yeah, we've a couple of plans for the for the few books coming after that. Um, one book in particular, I'm very excited about, but I, I won't get into just yet. Oh, the Skaven book, obviously. 
Oh, the Skaven book, yeah. Or, or the Squig book. Uh, all Squigs all the time, um, which is what the Discord has been asking for. Yeah. Yeah. Why do they want that? <laughs> Why not? The oh, Squigs yeah. were great, yeah. 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 Um, cha- Champions of Boing, we'll call it. There are a lot of squigs in the beast here, and uh, yeah, they're 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 a ton of fun. The squigs are great. That's it. Uh, so yes, people won't have to use the homebrew squigs. Uh, yeah, any yeah. Longer. Uh, once, I think we had a, we had a few in the core book, but yeah, there's still a lot of squigs. So yeah, I don't think we even got all the squigs, all the squigs in the book. Honestly, but we got a lot. Uh-huh. Oh, that's that, uh, that's great. Um, that's fabulous. Well, um, I think I think then that's um, that's probably the end of our conversation our chat our yeah. live stream and for everyone at home unless anyone at home wants to chime in right this second you've got about 20 seconds to delay to get in no it's okay we'll just sit here quietly <laughs> <laughs> we will actually both drink some water mm. uh, yeah because we must um and if not i think uh we're just going to say thank you very much uh to emmett Byrne. uh oh, actually did yeah, we, it was did talk, actually, did we talk about um, the uh, starter set? Um, a little bit, but not a huge amount. But that actually should be landing in store soon. Yeah, I think actually, so. I think I believe it's on a boat, and it'll be it'll be in our warehouses in the next few weeks, yeah. um, and then it'll obviously go from our distribution partners out to shops and things. But uh, but yeah, it's I have it here again, my handy dandy shelf. Don't fall down because this happened to me the other day. But yeah, it's um, it's I'm actually like so impressed. It's rock solid. You could beat someone over the head with it if you wanted. But uh, but not, yeah, not the a, uh, actual piece of advice from Cubicle Seven there. But uh, yeah, don't attack someone over uh, your starter set unless they really deserve yeah. it. But yeah, we have our nice dice here, which has the uh, see the symbol of Akshi on it. I'll try not to blind it with my light. Very nice. Uh, but yeah, the, we actually have an unboxing video. I won't do it now, but we have an unboxing video on the on our YouTube that you can see. But there's like tons of stuff in it, which you can't see because it's all white. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of really good stuff in it. I, I'm I'm really proud of the the work that the the team did and um, how kind of complete a starter set is. It's if anyone has seen the the warmer fantasy starter set, it's very much in the same vein. Um, and it's only. I want to say thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah, I think it's twenty-four less. quid, or something like that. Yeah, um, so. yeah, which is just preposterous Absolutely. for for a start. So the amount of stuff in there, you have sixty-four page book, a thirty-two, a forty-eight page adventure book, cards, dice, handouts, all that kind of stuff. And, and just for anyone who was kind of like hovering around the edge of uh, Soulbound generally, um, just uh, and you, but maybe you've never picked up a starter set. Um, mm. Uh, th- there's th- while I love this book, starter sets are the best way to get in to anything like this. Yeah, they're so it's nice. Because... Um, the the I I would say absolutely. It's if you're not quite sure, the starter set is thirty quid. It'll give you like nine to twelve hours of entertainment. I would say. Um, plus it has you know we have the 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 city book in there, which has another eight one page adventures that you can play through as well and then you have the free uh, you have uh, the free crash and burn adventure that you could definitely play using those characters and then there's two more short adventures online so um yeah it's, it's, anyone's any doubt and doesn't doesn't want to drop 60 quid or whatever the equivalent is in pounds um on the core book the the start set is only 25 pounds 30 dollars i don't know 28 euros so, i don't know <laughs> some, yeah, so yeah. A, a, a preposterous amount as you say which is a preposterously small amount uh, to say, so yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, maybe like one really good takeaway, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, exactly. uh, yes, and then uh, hopefully we can all, uh, if all things go well, we can all be playing this together in 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 rooms with people very shortly as well. Yeah, imagine that. I'm so much looking forward to. It. Um, uh, we have had got a comment here who's just saying uh, that they might use. The starter set to beat someone so well, actually i shouldn't read it out um so uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> whoops um well so emma thank you for joining us today um yeah thanks so uh, much and uh, it's been a pleasure um and uh thank you for everyone who joined us at home as well um uh, so uh, i believe that's it and we're going to say goodbye i'm chris from tabletop gaming uh come visit us at tabletopgaming.co.uk we should probably say that you should uh, spend some time over at the cubicle 7 website filling your basket with things as well um and all that and all that sort of stuff um 
Uh, and that's it. So um, thank you very much, and we'll we'll see you all soon. Cheers, folks.